my competitive drive is, is far greater than anyone else that I've met. You know, I think that I thrive on that. I think that's my biggest motivation in life, you know, is to 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 compete, you know, find different competitions and certain things in life and, and, and try to overcome that, you know, be it positive or negative. But uh, I have yet to meet someone who is as competitive as me, you know, and I just feel that much confident about my competitive drive. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. But when the moment mattered most and he was called upon to deliver, he rarely, if ever, let us down. Jordan went seven consecutive years, averaging 30-plus. For 13 years in Chicago, he shot 50.5% from the field, uh, which is a better overall field goal shooting percentage than LeBron James, by the way. He was a nine-time first-team all-defensive player. Uh, he didn't take time off defensively. Uh, he usually he embraced uh, 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 the toughest defensive assignment night in, night out, during many occasions throughout his career. At the end of the day, Jordan didn't have that at his disposal, still did what he did, still rose to the occasion in big moments, was unblemished and undefeated in NBA Finals, never even allowed the Finals to get to a seventh game, was the ultimate assassin. Um, and I look at those things and I say, whatever LeBron D James does, without questioning his greatness in any way, when you bring up Jordan comparisons, there are too many down moments that he had that we would never associate with Michael Jordan. It's not even a debate to me. You want first place, come play with me. You want second place, go somewhere else. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. Um, well, I mean, I mean, every day, I mean, since, you know, 20 years, I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability, man, my vertical was a 40, it wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm -hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them. So your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm. and it just never changed. It's a good separation for me, you know, emotionally to be able to put myself in a place where at practice or when I'm training or during games, I switch my mind to something else switch my mode into something else right for me it's the equivalent of Maximus Desmus Meridius and Gladiator picking up the dirt smelling the dirt it's go time right so that was my mental switch it was like an actor getting ready for a film you got to put yourself in that cage when you're in that cage you are that character and then when you leave there it's something completely different but when I'm in that cage bro don't touch me don't talk to me <laughs>
17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead!